So two months ago today, and by the way, today is May 7th, so I'm talking about March 7th, I had a package delivered from Amazon, and it contained a Ryzen 1800X, and boy, was I excited. Now, practically speaking, the 1800X didn't provide me a whole lot over the 4790K that it was replacing. In fact, I would say the only thing that I've seen significant gains in from the uh, 1800X as opposed to the 4790K would be in the, my ability to stream and game on the same uh, computer. And by the way, I'll leave a card for uh, that streaming test for the 1800X as well as the Ryzen 1600 streaming test that I also did. So now that I've spent a couple months with my 1800X, I am sort of ready to give some just overall thoughts about the platform as a whole as well as the 1800X as an individual processor. So first off, I regret getting the 1800X just because the 1700 is so much cheaper and provides virtually the same performance that you can get from the 1800X. Right now, the Ryzen 1700 is $325 on Newegg and the 1800X is that $500 price point. So that $175 difference uh, is totally worth just reinvesting in something else, especially if you're doing uh, gaming on your computer. You're far better served just getting the 1700 overclocking it, maybe spend some of that budget on getting a really nice cooler for your 1700, but then filtering some of those savings into a better graphics card will net you much better performance in a gaming type of task than getting the 1800X would. But of course, gaming is not the only story of Ryzen, which it does that very well. Maybe not as well as the top-end i7 processors from Intel, but gaming is a strong suit of Ryzen as well as productivity. But of course, if you are somebody that does not want to overclock, maybe you don't want to learn for some reason, or you just don't want to invest the time in doing it, then maybe the 1800X with its higher stock clocks actually does make some sense for you. Of course, the Ryzen platform itself has seen sort of a growth over the lifespan of the last two months. For example, memory compatibility is constantly getting better. In fact, AMD is working on another microcode update that hopefully adds a little bit of uh, better memory compatibility to the Ryzen lineup and allows us to push those uh, memory clocks higher and higher and get more and more competitive with Intel, which seems to have the RAM compatibility down pretty pat. In addition, it continues to be important for you if you are running a Ryzen platform to continue to look for those BIOS updates as they are still rolling in on a frequent basis. Um, and especially with the microcode updates from AMD, you can expect, again, new BIOS versions from your motherboard manufacturer coming down the pipeline. As a tech enthusiast, I have been extremely happy with my Ryzen platform, albeit I still do, as I mentioned earlier, wish I had a Ryzen 1700 instead of the 1800X and would have just pocketed that extra money. That being said, I did learn from my mistake and I went with the Ryzen 1600 for my secondary PC build. And again, that processor has been extremely solid for me as well. But if the question is whether I would recommend the 1800X or the Ryzen 7 platform in general, I would tend to lean towards no for the vast majority of people. However, there are some people that will take advantage of it. For example, I firmly believe that the Ryzen 1700 is the better option for almost everybody compared to the Ryzen 1800X just purely based on the price point and the fact that you're not getting any extra cores or any extra threads for that $175 premium that you'll pay to get the 1800X over the 1700. And furthermore, for most people, especially just people that are wanting to do gaming, the Ryzen 5 1600 is a far better value than the 1700 is. So unless you're planning on doing streaming or uh, other productivity work that is multi-threaded in a big way, then you should probably stick to the 6-core and 12-thread variants, which I believe most gamers simply will. But for the people that do benefit from more cores and more threads on a particular machine, Ryzen 7 is a phenomenal phenomenal value and I can't recommend it enough over the Intel counterparts just because with Intel you pay such a premium for basically the name unless of course you're somebody that utilizes Thunderbolt 3 and if that's you and you absolutely require that in your computer then Ryzen obviously is not for you. So I guess those are some of my random thoughts about the Ryzen 1800X at this point. I'm super excited for what AMD has coming down the pipeline in the form of Vega and graphics cards. And I'm also wondering 
what Zen 2 will look like. Will they focus on increasing clock speeds or will they focus on raising the IPC to get even closer to Intel? We don't really know what AMD's plans for the Zen 2 processors will be, but if they're anything like the original Zen processors, they will be an exciting launch and they will definitely have me watching uh, very closely to see what they're bringing to the table. And finally, guys, I wanna hear from you down in the comments what you think of the Ryzen, not just the 1800X, but the Ryzen platform as a whole. Do you love it, hate it? Uh, are you planning on building a Ryzen PC? If you are, please post PC part picker links and I'd be happy to approve those because I'm sure that you two will flag them as spam, but I will approve those because I wanna see what types of PCs you guys are trying to build with your Ryzen platforms. And as always, guys, if you like this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, again, comment down below. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. It's the same tag for your convenience. I have Amazon links down there in case you are interested in buying your own Ryzen platform and getting that up and running. And as always, YouTube will give us a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.